Yes, you look fine. Screen, you're going to see a ticker of every local race and the results in real time as they start to come in. Florida has closed primaries, so only voters registered with a political party were allowed to cast their ballots in certain Three races. Minutes. But all voters, regardless of party, could vote in the elections for a range of offices, including school board members and judges. We have so. live team coverage tonight on some of the most high profile Larry, stand races. By here. Stand by Larry Morto is covering the first Miami Dade County Sheriff's we'll Race. Larry! Larry Seward is focusing on the election for Miami Dade Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Current Mayor Daniela Levine Cava is hoping to keep her seat. Double box next. Two. Two. Point two. Point two. Race. If a no candidate receives more than 50% of the vote, the top two will face a runoff in November. Our team coverage Double begins up. with CBS News Miami's Larry Seward. He joins us live from Ball and Chain Restaurant in Little Havana, where Mayor Levine Cava's campaign is holding the fort tonight. Larry? Simple. Yeah, good evening. The mayor is hey, well, watch party tonight. Like it's in the courtyard at Tasker Hall and Jane's famous lounge. And listen, it's filled up already. You can see people. There's a vibe going here with the mayor. She's got these cooling fans. You want this mayor's here. race banner over this? There's a DJ here on the stage. He yeah. All right, you got it. Before polls close. Wasn't sure if you wanted it on just a full screen. The mayor to take this stage around 8 o'clock or so to discuss or the what the video. voters decide tonight. You mentioned it. The mayor has six challengers. We met two I guess I'm going to go to one now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. management is widening the gap between Miami Dade's rich and poor. This morning, the mayor, though, sporting a Run DLC t shirt on her way to vote, told us she hopes to be reelected for a second term tonight. She wants to continue Very pushing seconds. upgrades to infrastructure at the airport, with transit, the water system, and affordability. But according to the county charter, she'll need the majority of votes to avoid a runoff in November. But that's reserved just for the top two vote getters, the challengers they expect. And Tonight. We'll see however it shakes out. You'll hear from the incumbent from here at Ball and Chain. Full screen, thanks. You might be. Larry, thank you. Now to the race for Miami Dade Sheriff. The top candidate from each party will appear on the ballot during the general election in November. CBS News Miami's Joe Gorcho, also live in Little Havana, where a watch party is being hosted for one of the candidates in that crowded field. Joe? Is that full? Laura and Nas, welcome to Casa Wancho for Joe Sanchez's watch party. You can see family, friends, and supporters, a nice small gathering, relaxing, anticipating the results coming in. They'll see the results come in on this screen right here. to the gentleman standing. Hope he's having a good time. <laughs> you didn't have to move. You're good. But they'll be updating them throughout the night as the polls have closed, and we'll be seeing who is taking a lead in the primary on the Republican side. Now, there are 15 candidates in the Miami-Dade County Sheriff's race on the Republican side, and 11 will be running on the Republican, as we just mentioned, and for the Democratic ticket. And for the first time in nearly 60 years, Miami did not have the choice. And the winners of both primary races will then advance to the general election in November. Today, we seconds. saw a handful of candidates out and about in the community making their final push and appeal to voters. Up. It is someone who knows this community, knows this department, this understands our rich history, but can also Six. take us into the future. Above all, to bring law and order to this community, and that's what we're focused on. My campaign has always been about law and order. Vision and the experience to transition us from the department to what you want to do in the sheriff's office. And what we want to accomplish is how we law and order in Miami-Dade County, removing politics from it. And again, the winner in November will then lead one of the largest law enforcement agencies in the United States and begin leading this transition to moving to a sheriff's office. Live in Little Havana at the Joe Sanchez Watch Party, Joe Gorcho, CBS News Miami. Thank you. All right, Joe, thank you. We continue our team coverage tonight with CBS News Miami's Jim Defeaty. Jim, lots of races to watch tonight. Let's go back to the one Larry Seward is covering the race for Miami Dade County Mayor, obviously the incumbent mayor. Danielle Levine Cava trying to hold on to her seat, but explain the process ahead of her. Did you start the clock? Two thirty. Possibility. Yeah, out there are, you know, with a half a dozen candidates in the race, it's uh, unless you. you get fifty percent plus one vote, you go to a runoff in November. Danielle Levine Cava is really hoping to avoid okay. that runoff. She's hoping to win it outright uh, in the oh, August, in August, so she doesn't have to lose. Uh, you know. Okay. So give me the, the, the three shots on two. Critical race. But you know what I'm thinking. So. When you want a date of the mayor of Miami Dade County has a lot of influence in terms of a lot of things. You know, in terms of the joint 
cooperation with Broward County, everything from the running of the airports, seaports, you know, the, the transit issues. This is a massive government that the mayor of Miami County oversees, and so it really is one of those critical things. You now, get even though it's a nonpartisan race, everyone knows that Neil Levine Cobb is a Democrat, and most of our opponents, almost all of our opponents, are Republicans. We'll see if that plays into it. Another big race we're following tonight, the sheriff's race in Miami-Dade County and Broward. My producer just told me those numbers are coming in. What do you anticipate? Let's take the Broward. You know, the, the sheriff's the Broward race. The Yeah, give me a second. Just another order. James Reyes on the Democratic side who is running as part of Kava's slate to, to win on the Democratic side, but it's really who on the Republican side. When you've got upwards of 11 candidates over, and this is the Broward race, we're already seeing Tony come in with 49% uh, of the vote, a good start for Tony. So let's stick with the Broward race. I apologize. So we're sticking with the Broward race for a second. You know, this what fascinates me most about this race is how Gregory Tony, despite all the scandals, despite all of the stories that have been out there about him, you know, the revelations that when, as a youth, he actually shot and killed the man, you know, in Philadelphia, the questions as to whether or not he should be certified as a law enforcement officer, all those challenges, and yet here he is coasting to what appears to be re-election. So that's one of those races where you just sit, scratch your head and sort of go, I guess there is no bad publicity in Broward, as long as you've got that D next to your name, you're doing pretty well. But quickly in Miami-Dade, obviously a very crowded field, so who are you expecting to come out? Can we take a 28 feet? got Reyes on the Democratic side, that's likely to think. But when you've got literally 11 candidates, one of them is going to win probably with maybe no more than 18 or 19 percent of the vote. And then it's a Should we take the, the Democratic one? In November and we'll you have it? Right. Well, the, the thing is that it's not right the way it's filed. Okay, we're we're only showing the top five candidates at any given time. That's all that's happening. I'm Democrat. Yes. You want it? Yes, please. We'll update all throughout the evening. Keep it right here for continuing coverage of primary election day. We're going to have live updates beginning at 8 p.m. on air and on our CBS Miami stream. And then, no of course, join us tomorrow morning for results and reaction coming in overnight on CBS News Miami Morning Edition beginning at 5 a.m. Yes. This is a long animation. We're good. Thank you. Today's theme is a bold vision for America's future. Former President Barack Obama and All right. Michelle Obama Weather animation are scheduled to speak one. later tonight. Weather open. Kill the acres of light. Always tracking is his best weather. Very warm and muggy Tuesday evening, I guess, for all the wash parties going on. Pretty nice conditions. We had that rain earlier today. The temperature did manage to reach 93 degrees today. So now we're down to 89. You know what helps so if, like if you guys down. call those full yeah, screens by the race number? Continue, so that will keep the heat in place. So again, the National Weather Service Thank is you, Jen. Yeah, huh? Of course I can read. I wish, you know what, Jen? I wish I had all the time in the world. I'll give it to you. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> again tomorrow. What did you say? Who, me? Raul, yeah. If you use the race number, it would have been easier for me. So, um, when you say race number? It's 233, two, 231, two, 232. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two. Okay, I got you. I'll do that next time. It's about a quarter of an inch, just about a quarter of an inch. That's in these ones? Yeah. Am I loud again? I can't. It's all overnight, it should be dry, and then tomorrow, looking for more... Yeah, showers and thunderstorms, especially along the coastal areas. Remember, we got flow coming from the south and west, so it's going to be a very sticky Wednesday with highs again in the low to mid 90s. All right, Cindy, thank you. Tonight, a man is accused of taping women in changing rooms at a Goodwill Superstore in Southwest Miami Dade. Diego Jose Rosales Murillo is charged with three counts of video voyeurism. Renice Murillo observed women going into the changing rooms. He reached over the partitions and then used his cell phone to record them without their consent. Goodwill is cooperating with authorities and says it's committed to providing a safe and welcoming Same environment. Yep. The owner of a dog grooming Real business nice. connected to a dog abuse case is speaking out. He admits the man seen on video kicking a dog was an employee. The suspect no longer works for Deluxe Mobile Grooming Services. The attack triggered reactions all over social media. The owner of the business tells CBS News Miami he has received many death threats and fears for his own safety. When I woke up on Saturday 14. morning, I see that I have two negative reviews from my movie. Okay. I asked him, is this what I think it is? And he said Did yes. Did you kick the dog? And he said yes. 
the owner says he notified police and shut down so the government's nice website. Opelaka officials have once again moved to fire an officer with a history of troubling incidents. Sergeant Sergio Perez was demoted after being arrested twice. First for using a taser on a fellow officer, then for allegations of excessive force. Although he was acquitted for those charges, officials say an internal investigation found multiple policy violations. Perez had previously been fired in 2013 for his role in a deadly wrong-way crash, but he was reinstated. City leaders are expected to provide an update tomorrow. An update on North Miami's operations. The city has been open with limited services after right. a cyber attack, but there's a new warning tonight. Fake emails being sent on behalf of city staff. If you receive one, do not click on links or send money. You are urged to contact the community Jeez, outline. Next. The number is 305-895-9804. Still ahead, a bold thief caught in the act. How the quick-thinking homeowner turned the tables on a porch pirate. Plus, meet at this week's Nat Moore Trophy nominee. He's a stand-up defensive back with legendary lineage. How he's making his own mark on and off the field. When coping with grief, traditional therapy isn't always enough. There's not enough therapy in the world to help me process this. I'm Laura Pastrana. Whether it's the loss of a loved one, divorce, or trauma, see how you can find healing at hand. Thursday at 5.30. Thank you so much. Hey. Yeah. Hi, can I kill the log open? Alright. Either Hacho is Excuse an Ella or Hacho. I don't know. No, no I don't know the information on no any of the other shows. I just know that they're there. Um, and you may make us here. Day knows she's doing them. Any numbers here? Okay. Is it a sound on the box? Can we check uh, Cindy's mic? Because it sounded crackly on the air earlier. Is it a shit yeah. on Fox? I don't know if it was a loose antenna or. You see that, Earl? Fox? Freaking. Barely. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just so, you're so low because the anchors are loud, and then I can barely hear you normally. <sighs> oh, okay. Fifteen seconds. Stand by. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, seven, five, six, five, four, four three, two, three, two, one. Two, one. Welcome back. An important reminder about packages left unattended. Forge pirates are always out, and one was caught in the act in Hollywood. Fourteen. shows a woman walking up to the house and taking items from One the nurse. front porch. Just as she was about to leave, the homeowner confronts her. The woman then claims that she was just going to drop off the packages, and the homeowner quickly challenges her, asking, quote, by going the other way. The woman immediately left the packages and took off. 
Tonight, we're introducing you to this week's Nat Moore Trophy nominee. Ben Hanks is a defensive back from Booker T. Washington High School in Overtown. Uh, so now, if the name sounds familiar, oh, that's yeah. because he's the son of former defensive superstar Ben Hanks of the Florida Gators. As CBS Sports Miami's Trish Christakis reports, he's looking oh, to that achieve that great things on and off the field, just like his father. Uh, Raul? <laughs> At the end of the vlog? You know he's right here, right? The the ball, ball, oh, <laughs> it's like you're screaming like crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, where's Raul? Where's Raul? Where's Raul? Where's Raul? So what's the deal? <laughs> At the end of the vlog, what? Do you want to show full screens again? Uh, <laughs> no, I <laughs> Okay. Yes, you did. Oh, I know. I mean, in this package, can you drop the little button oh, so yeah. we can see the, all the networks in this? That's fine. I will do that. <laughs> well, it was like a panic. <laughs> Why is it so hot here? Yeah, if these doors weren't open, it would be hot. If these doors weren't open, it would be more than I think so. Are you supposed to keep this room closed for the puppet? Well, not this room. So this room is supposed to be hot? Not hot, not freezing like the studio. The studio is supposed to be hot. Why? Because it's going to come out. Oh, no, 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 but, but we don't really need it that much because of these lights. These lights are empty, right? Ben and his father the new lights in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. Off the field. Still the warms up a little. The at the park in Overtown, his dad rides. Well, we know over by the, uh, the side set. It's real happy. Yep. Yep. Yes. Ivan. Ivan will tell you. Although playing on Saturday, the main role that is not getting an education. Ooh, this and spending some time like this in front of the Rolanda. camera. Rolanda, Rolanda, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, is she like the talk show back in the day? She used to be an anchor in New York. Oh, really? Yeah. At 7? No, in New York. WABC. Oh, she's been on the show for quite some time. Yeah. She you two can nominate your favorite high school football player. Head to NatmoreTrophy.com. The CBS Miami like Nat Moore Trophy is sponsored by FPL, working for you every single day. Learn more at FPL.com slash store. When they're open. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. I am here today and we've got more of these type of days ahead of us. We'll have daily showers and thunderstorms. I think our higher chance will come on Thursday and then again heading into the weekend. I'm going to take another look at the tropics here. Even though there's not a lot going on, but I've got some new information for you too. How hot is it hot? Is Jenny it going to be tomorrow? Well, that was a problem. That scorcher category. That we have a heat advisory in effect until 6 o'clock tomorrow. We're expecting a high in uh, Miami. I'm going to be a some 94 degrees. Not too far from that record high of 97. And again, Seven. on Thursday, 93. Record high is 96. So we're getting close to that record territory. And to get away from the water, it's still hot. Sunny just here. Yes, we have an offshore flow tomorrow. Sunny Not an offshore, but an offshore flow with those southwesterly Spring winds. Up. So getting away from the water doesn't even Oh, July! There goes her mic again. Uh, oh, they must be doing like special coverage today. Also, not really is very sticky. There's this that again, man. It was like temperatures back into the triple digits again tomorrow. I don't know. So that has I don't know what it is. It must be your necklace. On the health related health you know issues here. here. Anywhere you see the yeah, red, that would be major. Affects uh, without cooling and once it's it's again, definitely it's the next measure. measure. Do you think it's a necklace? Uh, uh, for sure. The keys. You see that purple there? Yeah, that would be extremely I don't see it rubbing on there. Yeah. You think it's our hair? I think it's the mic. We're going to see showers and thunderstorms again tomorrow, starting on the yeah. west. And then interior to us in the toward the east by the time we get to about Once 2 o'clock in the break. afternoon. So this will help bring temperatures can't down do anything. temporarily, but look how quickly they're out of here by 5 And when he gets in there, he's not going to And then overnight dry, really? we get into Thursday. And oh, Calvin is in Haiti, guys. And on Thursday, huh? that's going to start Calvin to be the transition. And then when our winds okay. turn to the south and eventually the southeast, then we get into more of a typical summertime pattern for us. <sighs> except we've got a little new tropical wave coming in this weekend. Speaking of the tropics. Is there something going on in Haiti that we don't know about? Out here over the next seven days. Calvin's on. Clear as can be out here in the like Atlantic. I'm going to show you where we have record heat. Gulf of Mexico as of today, which, by the way, is the beginning of the peak of the hurricane season. 
record warmth out here in the Gulf of Mexico with these water temperatures, but it's not just the water temperatures. The atmosphere has to also cooperate. You can't have wind shear. You've got to have the right juice in place. So all of that combines to make for tropical storms and hurricanes. We'll see how that happens as we get further into the season. Temperatures will stay in the United States.